Hi class, in today's lesson I'm wanting to basically move on a little bit from what we learned about last week which was doing just a basic tonal skill um, within these boxes or as a gradient uh, to applying some of those principles to sketching some objects. And we're going to keep it really simple, um, at least in terms of a basic expectation, but I'm really happy, uh, or I will be really happy, if you wanted to take these principles and apply it to something a bit more complex. I noticed that when some of you complete the task last week, um, or I should say last week, but you know I think it was before the holidays, but when you completed it, not only did some of you do this part, some of you actually had to go at doing some more complex shapes. So if that was you, by all means, take what we're doing here and try creating some kind of compound shapes or more complex shapes. I'll maybe talk a little bit more about that after I've done the basic demonstration though. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with um, a couple of really simple shapes. We're going to just start with a cube, a cone and a cylinder and talk about how we would use different tonal values to make those shapes look three dimensional. Now to start with, we need to actually sketch them. So that's the kind of one I did already. I'm going to get a blank bit of paper so you'll need a bit of paper and a pencil ideally a sharp one and what we're going to do here is first of all start off by sketching our cube now if you are struggling a little bit with uh, sketching this don't worry too much what you could do is go online and search for isometric cube uh, as a google image search and then you could just trace from screen or you could even actually just print it and um, render over the top of it if you're really struggling with sketching it. But I think the sketching part's pretty straightforward, so I'll just do it quickly. What we do is we kind of turn our paper so it's at an angle it's comfortable to sketch on. We sketch our first line here, which represents the front corner of it. And then we're trying to do two lines. If you remember from doing isometrics in our class, those lines should be about 30 degree angles, so roughly like that. We then want another line, which is parallel to this line up here. And then again, the same at this side. So a line that's parallel to that over here. And then we do more lines that are parallel to this front one here and here. Now it doesn't matter terribly whether you make it perfect. It's more just a, an opportunity for us to try and apply these skills. Um, but after we've done that, we then sketch another line parallel to there, another one to here. Okay, so that's us done our isometric uh, cube. And the next step is really just to move on. Sorry, it's struggling a wee bit with focusing. Let's give that another go. Um, the next step is to move on to doing the cone and the cylinder. So to sketch our cone, uh, what I find the simplest way to start the cone is to start by doing a straight line, which represents kind of the center line of it. And then at the bottom of that straight line, we want to just try and sketch a nice even ellipse or kind of an oval shape, which is centered on that line. And then at the edges of that, we want to try and sketch a line up to the top. And that gives us our basic cone shape. Okay, so that's us got our cone and our cuboids. And then finally, we're going to do our cylinder. And the cylinder is actually very similar to doing this. Um, we really are just looking for two ellipses. But what I find can be easier with doing the cylinders, if you do the two vertical lines, which should be parallel with each other, we do them first uh, so that we've got kind of, a, I guess, a, a boundary that the ellipses we need to draw will start and end within. And then in here we want to sketch a little ellipse at the bottom and then another ellipse at the top. We want to try and get those ellipses so that they're in between the lines. So having done that, these are just our kind of guides. We can tidy them up if we need to. Um, do feel free to use a rubber if you need to have another go at it. It's no big deal. And don't worry if you can't get it perfect. Just do the best you can. Um, what I will do is I will keep that still for a wee second and if you need to trace what you can do is just pause the video at that point and you could take your piece of paper, put it up to your um, computer screen and hopefully you'll be able to see them well enough on your computer screen to trace them. Um, when I've gone over them darker I'll, I'll put them back up later on um, and you can maybe trace them from there if you need to as well. So the first one, that's simple, what we're looking for are three different tonal scales. So um, we're looking for First of all, this darkest side, and then the, the kind of lightest side, and then we're going to try and do the medium one, because we're imagining the light's coming from mainly above and a bit from this side. Um, by all means, obviously, at this stage, pause the video if you haven't finished sketching, and wait till you finish sketching before you watch this next bit. So the next bit here, as I say, we'll start with the darkest side. So I'm going to use my pencil. Again, good grip on the pencil here. I want to hold it 
if we're trying to do dark lines quite close to the tip here, put firm pressure on it. And the, the key for us is to go side to side quickly, but along the way slowly, okay? So I'm going to put this on top of a couple of other bits of paper, just so I've got a smoother surface to, to render on. I'm going to work my way up there. So side to side quickly, moving up the way slowly. Now, there are actually some quite clever tricks you can use to render right up to the actual line without having to worry about going over it. Um, like using a solid, something with a solid straight edge, like for example, uh, this coaster here. If you put that there, oh, I've got a mess all over my page, that was silly. But if you um, put that there, you can use that as a border to stop your pencil. But I'm just going to do it freehand, that's an awful shame. I made a bit of a mess of the page, but never mind. We'll just kind of get on with it. And then, if you can't get up to the edges neatly, you can just come into the sides and work your way in. And as long as you're using that good technique so that you're not leaving lots of lines and gaps, it shouldn't be too obvious that you've changed the direction of your pencil, although you do generally try and avoid that if you can. So there we go, that's that first side. Um, now, having done that, I'm just going to tidy the edges up, make sure that they're nice and sharp. And the next one I'm going to move on to is the lightest side. So we'd said the top is going to be the lightest side. So what I'm doing this time is to take my hand further back on the pencil, less pressure. And I'm just going over that as lightly as I possibly can. With this one in particular, it really doesn't matter so much if you go over the edges. Because if you do, it's such a light pencil mark, it's dead easy to rub it out. So you can take a rubber and tidy that edge up if it's not quite spot on. And on this side, we then just need to use the darkest and lightest tones to try and judge uh, a tone that's kind of somewhere in between. So we want to put a bit of pressure on the pencil so that we get a dark enough tone so that it's darker than that lightest one we did at the top, but darker than that one we did on the other side. So that's our first shape. Uh, well, that's our, our first run over. Now I think it could be a little bit darker, so I'd maybe come back to that again over it one more time. Just to darken that down a little bit. And again, I'm going to do this quite quickly. I'm not taking as much care about it as I would if I was you know, doing this uh, with the intention of presenting it to somebody. Uh, just because I'm trying to get this video done quite quickly for you. But after we're happy with that, what we can do is we can go around, uh, particularly around the outside edges that kind of follow areas that have nothing behind them. Uh, we would usually want to go around there, just kind of firm those lines in if we need to, just to tidy it all up, make it a little bit nice and nicer and crisper. Okay, so that's our, our three-dimensional cuboid. Now moving on to, we'll, we'll do the cylinder next. The way that the cylinder works is instead of having single tones, we are going to do this with a, a gradient going across from side to side. Now, if you are working on this, obviously pause the video, finish doing that one, and then you can come back to this one. So if you're ready to start on the cylinder, what I would usually do is turn my page so that I can go side to side, like along the, the height of the cylinder. And let's put this on the page here. And then I would decide which side's going to be darkest. So for me, that side's going to be darkest and this side's going to be lightest. Uh, you could do it so that the light's actually coming from dead on here, where we would have a strip of light down the front and it gets dark at both edges. It's up to you. You can decide. Um, but I'm going to do it so it's darkest to the left and then lighter on the right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do our gradient and we're starting off pretty dark. We can always come in and darken it more if we need to, so don't worry if you don't get it quite as dark as you think you should first time around. And as we go along, and past that halfway point, I'm starting to take more pressure off the pencil, right down to a point where we just leave it completely white. Now I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to build that tone up a bit more in some of these areas that were not quite as dark as they could be. And again, we're trying to use the side of the lead so we get that nice soft tone. And we're just going to build that up until we're at a point where we're happy that we have a nice dark tone right at the edge there, sort of slowly and smoothly fading around to the lighter tones. Um, and again, depending on how neatly you've done it, how carefully you've done it, I'm doing this quite quickly, but you might need to go around the tops and the bottoms to just tidy them in a wee bit so that you don't have weird patchy little bits. And go over the 
outlines, you'd be surprised how much of a difference it makes. Just go over them to pick them out a bit if they're looking a bit um, rough. Just go over them again, make them nice and clear. So that we have our nice tonal range from dark going across to light. And then on the top surface you could maybe choose just a kind of a, a light mid-tone. Um, some people leave like a little band or a little strip there to simulate a reflection. But, uh, you know, again, you can make your own decisions. And finally, uh, so take a wee bit of time to do the, the cylinder. When you finish that one, you can come back to this and watch the one on the cone. Um, so all we're doing here is same thing again, but we're starting dark at that side here. Again, we could do dark at this side, vice versa, it makes no difference. And what we've got to do is we've got to make that line come around, but what's different is instead of going straight across, the line's going to start at that angle, but it's going to end at that angle. And so how you do that is really up to you. Um, personally, uh, I tend to just kind of move my hand as I go around. Some people actually move the paper around as they do it. It really doesn't matter, whatever works for you. So we're going to work our way around. So you're going to have to do more at the bottom than you are at the top. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then as you're going around, you're lightening pressure of your pencil so that you get lighter at this side. So we do our first run across. And we're really going to try and darken that side down. Bring that tone out a bit further. So we get a nice fade from dark to light. And... Again, we're just going to firm in these edges, particularly the bottom here, and tidy in any little bits that are not quite as good as we'd like them to be. And that's us basically got our three, you know, probably our one of some of our most commonly used um, geometric shapes. Now, if you want, you can extend it a little bit. If you find that quite interesting, you could try doing some other things, like, for example, a pyramid. So with the pyramid, we want to sketch a square base or, you know, an isometric rectangular kind of base. We need to decide where the center is up at the top here. So we need to kind of project a line up from there. And then we need to just sketch our lines in to give ourselves our pyramid. And then, you know, again, you can just sketch your different tonal values on the different sides. I'm just doing this really quickly because I don't want to make this any longer than it needs to be. Um, to give us our kind of three-dimensional effect. And there we go, we've got our kind of three-dimensional looking pyramid. Not the neatest one I've ever drawn, but I hope that gives you the idea. Um, we could also do compound shapes, which is where we add things to other things. So for example, we could have uh, this cuboid, but instead of it just being cuboid, it could have a, a cylindrical part that's coming out the side of it. So we could kind of sketch the shape of a cylinder, kind of sticking out the side of it. And then we could think about how we would render that. Uh, so we'd need to just sketch the outlines of it first. And then we'd be adding in the darker bit at the bottom. And it would be getting lighter as it came around to the top. Tidy the edges up a little bit. Uh, we could even um, add, you know, for example, the pyramid onto the top of that. So you can take these principles and, you know, mix and match them with different shapes. Um, you know, you don't have to do all the same. It could be that actually this was, instead of being a whole cylinder, it had a kind of a cut out here. So it was actually like this sort of shape. And you would kind of mix a little bit of those two different techniques. So we'd have our light side here uh, at the bottom where it was kind of lightest. And then this, this side here would maybe be a bit darker. So you can, as I say, you can play around with those techniques. So as your homework task, I am really sorry. <laughs> I, had some, I must have had some tea on my coaster there um, for messing this up. But what I'd like you to do is take these principles that we've learned about doing different tonal scales and try and apply them to sketching and rendering some different uh, geometric shapes. If you've got any questions, do let me know. Uh, the video has been about 15 minutes, so that should allow you the remainder of the period that you normally spend on this uh, to get working on it. 
best look.